Mountain Ride by Sharon Katz Cooper and Rachel Young. Illustrated by Ariane Elsamak. You know how to ride a bike. Just hop on and start pedaling. But what if your bike didn't have pedals? Or brakes? How did bikes get started? A German ranger named Carl von Dreis wanted a faster way to roam around the woods. His contraption, called a Dreisian, he named it after himself, of course, didn't have pedals. It was more like a sit-on scooter. Special schools sprang up to teach people how to ride these hobby horses. Only the rich could afford them. And the dirt roads meant for real horses were too rough for comfortable riding. This happened in 1818. In 1821, the hobby horse needed more oomph, but people didn't believe you could balance on two wheels without your feet touching the ground. One solution was a hobby horse with a handlebar you pulled to make the front wheel spin faster. These awkward machines were not a hit with anyone but mail carriers. They used them for deliveries. In 1839, Kirk McMillan, a Scottish blacksmith, built the first real bicycle. It had foot pedals that turned the back wheel. It reached top speeds of 14 miles or 23 kilometers per hour. But the pedal-powered bike was hard to steer. McMillan caused the first bike wreck when he plowed into a crowd of people and knocked down a small child. In 1861, a French carriage maker named Pierre Michaud moved the foot pedals to the front wheel. This made the hobby horses easier to ride, and more people began to try them out. They were even used in carousels at fairs, but with hard metal tires, the machines earned their nickname Bone Shakers. In 1870, since the pedals were directly attached to the bicycle's front wheel, each time the pedal went around once, the wheel went around once. So to go faster, you needed a bigger wheel, more distance for each pedal. Front wheels got bigger and bigger until they were 5 feet or 1.5 meters across. To save weight, the back wheel shrank. The fast, big-wheeled bikes became so popular that they were called ordinaries. Getting on one was a little out of the ordinary, though. You had to have a boost from a friend or a running start and then hope that the road ahead was smooth. Bumps sent riders flying over the handlebars, which was known as taking a header. 1881. Ordinaries were popular with adventurous young men. But older riders wanted a safer machine. They stuck to quadricycles and tricycles. Queen Victoria of England bought two trikes. They didn't have brakes, but who needs brakes when you're only going walking speed? 1885. In a quest to make two-wheelers safer, along came the Rover, the first safety bike. It worked a lot like the one you ride today. Pedals turned a chain. The chain turned the rear wheel. A larger gear ring in front and a small one in back meant that each push of the pedal turned the rear, rear wheel several times. So the wheel didn't need to be huge. The new bicycles were fast, safe, and less expensive. But with their solid rubber tires, the ride was still pretty bumpy. 1889. To give his son a more comfortable ride, John Boyd Dunlop wrapped a garden hose around the wheels of his tricycle. Water-filled hoses didn't work very well, but air-filled hoses were a success. The modern tire was born. The 1890s. With safe, cheap, comfortable bikes, cycling became a national craze. Cycling clubs sprang up all over. Bicycle races were popular, especially 100-mile centuries. Cyclists also pushed to get roads paved. Dirt, 
gravel, and mud are hard on bikes. Doctors even worried about the possible effects of riding too much. The strain of balancing, for instance, might cause bicycle face. Women, youth, and working people particularly enjoyed the new freedom bikes gave them. Before bikes, only rich people with horses could go out and see the country. Now, anyone could go. It's hard to ride in long skirts, so many women cyclists started wearing poofy pants known as bloomers. This started a fashion revolution that finally ended the era of long dresses for good. 1975 In the early days of cycling, many riders were hurt by pitching over the handlebars. A few wore leather caps, which didn't do much to cushion the blow. But when biking got popular again in the 1970s, riders demanded good helmets that actually protected the head. Finally. The future 1896 safety bike. Although bikes keep getting stronger and faster, the basic bike shape hasn't changed much in the last hundred years. It's a simple, efficient design that's hard to improve on. Today, in the United States, we get around mostly by car, but bikes are still the most popular vehicles on earth. Who knows? Maybe someday they'll rule the roads again. Modern bikes.